Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Friday and on my channel we do a little Friday dance thing, you know. We are so happy. It is the weekend. It's payday for some of us and uh, you dance. I usually get up out of my chair, but not today. Um, <laughs> covering the trial of Chad Daybell. Yes, day 11. Can you believe we are 11 days into this trial? And I want to talk to you uh, at the end, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why I'm concerned, <laughs> because I do have some concerns at this point. Okay. It wasn't a very riveting day, but there was some information that we hadn't heard before. So we're going to get to that. Chad Daybell is on trial for the murders of Tylee Ryan, 17 years old, JJ Vallow, seven years old, and his former wife, Tammy Daybell also conspiracy to commit their murders because he conspired with his current wife, Lori Vallow Daybell. She's got so many last names. I can't even begin to think of them all. Anyway, um, <laughs> they're still married. She's in jail. She was convicted of the same stuff and uh, sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole times, you know, several. He is facing the death penalty. Yes. I'm just trying to see what my doc is doing. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. I'm sorry. Anyway, so we picked up where we left off yesterday. The same person was on the stand. This is the detective that's actually sitting at the prosecution table as the representative of the state. Um, lead detective in the investigation of the Tammy Daybell case. Yeah. So where we left off was the email account of Alex Cox. Lori Vallow's brother, her protector. Yes. Maybe that was his name in a prior life, Homer J. Maximus. I don't know. Anyway, Homer J. Maximus at gmail.com. Anyway, uh, he had done some searches on his computer that were quite interesting. And I'm going to screw it up. I can tell you just right now because I am not a gun enthusiast. I don't know that much about guns, except for what I've learned through recapping these trials, which is quite a bit. But um, all of this is, all of these searches were in the time frame of the shooting or the attempted shooting of Tammy Daybell on October 9th. And um, it's believed, I told you yesterday, it's believed that the person that attempted to shoot Tammy Daybell in her driveway on that night was Alex Cox. Now, we don't know that for sure, but after I tell you what I'm going to tell you, it's probably for sure. So on October 8th, he was searching 100-yard drop to 300 and 100-yard drop to 200. Now, that means nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. I would have just skipped right by that one. But what that means is he's trying to calculate the where to set his scope, where to stand and fire, like to make sure that the bullet's not going to drop before it gets to her. I guess that's, that's what I can surmise from that. Um, and on cross-examination, the, the uh, defense attorney tried to calculate the distance of the driveway to the shooter, the attempted shooter, Alex, and, tried to insinuate that these searches at 100 yards, because 100 yards is way bigger than the length of her driveway, that he was just, you know, he was going hunting and he needed to know this information. Hmm. Okay. Then, um, and all of this searches had to do with a 6.5 Grendel assault rifle, which is what was found in Alex's stash in the garage during a search earlier. He was also searching frog tog pants. I don't know what that is. <laughs> and um, and si how to size them. So apparently the further out you get, the bullet tends to drop. So he was trying to figure out, I guess, where he's going to stand to 
commit this murder that he was attempting. Then on October 10th, which is afterwards, he is searching how an assault rifle functions in cold weather. And the detective said he looked up that evening. It was, it was evening. It was like nine o'clock ish. And uh, it was 26 degrees. This was October, 26 degrees that night. And on October 12th, he searched uh, if a 6.5 Grendel will shoot through a window. Also, he was searching a 2008 Dodge Dakota, the thickness of the body of the 2008 Dodge Dakota. Now, it just so happens that Chad and Tammy have a 2004 Dodge Dakota registered to them at the time. Now, according to the defense attorney, Chad was the one that drove that car. But was Alex planning to sh attempt to shoot her like he did Brandon Boudreaux, you know, in while she's in her vehicle? Shoot out the window, shoot through the thickness of the Dakota? I don't know. They searched uh, gun ranges to see if Alex had been at any gun ranges. And what they found was there was a gun range that he had been to between October 7th and October 15th, five times. And each time he signed in as C. Period Quint. And it just so happens that his license plate on his car, Alex Cox's car, his Ford F-150, that's a truck. I'm sorry. A truck. His license plate was CP Quint. Now, I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know if that's another name. Uh, I have no idea. Then uh, then we looked at Tammy's emails um, to her children. On October 13th, she emailed her son, Mark, and references a hopper. She was talking, Mark was on a mission. The uh, missions are something that they do in this uh, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They go on missions uh, and then they come back from the mission and they start their future. So Mark is out on this mission and she is telling him about what happened in the driveway and this attempted shooter. And she's describing this paintball gun as having a hopper on it. And this detective that was on the stand said this hopper would have looked uh, a lot like a paintball gun. What's, but the difference is the hopper on a paintball gun is off to the side and a hopper on a rifle is like directly above the rifle. He says, although, you know, they're making them more and more to look like assault rifles. So he says, I don't know if they're making them that way now to look exactly like a hopper on top of a rifle. But he says anything is possible. Then he did a geofence search. Now we know what geofence is now. We've learned what geofence is in the last month or so. Geofence is when the officers uh, get a search warrant, send it to the cell tower company, and they indicate a range of where they want all the cell phone information. They give them a date and they give them uh, an area. So he searched two areas. One was Chad Daybell's residence within a mile or two. And then the LDS church, which was two miles south of Chad Daybell's house. And he found four numbers for those areas. And one of those numbers was Alex Scott. And he, he, this was between October 18th and 19th, the day Tammy Daybell died. That was the geofence range. Chad's residence, October 18th, 19th. And Alex Cox's phone number pings in that area. You know what doesn't ping in that area? Chad Daybell's phone. Nope. He could have just had it turned off. There was no device associated with Chad Daybell found on those geofences for the October 18th and 19th, which I thought was really, really interesting. So at 10.05 to 10.45 p.m. on the 18th, uh, Alex Cox was near the church. 
And then at 11.53, he was seven miles south of the church. So after, at, a, at 10.45, his phone, there's no, nothing gets picked up again until 11.53. And this detective told the defense attorney that he was not aware that, Chad, that Alex knew anyone in this area other than Chad. So um, that's... You know what this proves? That Alex did it. <laughs> this is my concern. Where is the evidence against Chad Daybell? Um, it better start coming in soon because all we've established in this 11 days is that Lori Daybell and Alex Cox were up to no good. Um, and that under the influence of Chad Daybell, perhaps, but no concrete evidence like everything's circumstantial yes the bodies were found on his property yes we know that but uh the link to chad is pretty tenuous at this point i would say now defense attorney John Pryor asked this witness if he was aware that Tammy was doing Google searches after this shooting event, non-event, um, on paintball guns with another detective. And he said, no, he was not aware of that. And um, apparently that never got put into another detective's report. And from redirect, I gathered that this other detective is going to get on the stand and say that he didn't, he was not searching paintball guns with Tammy Daybell. Uh, like I said, it was a boring day in court. <laughs> so then we go through more of Tammy's emails to her children. And what I gleaned from these emails is that she that in their home, they were aware of this whole light and dark, that it was sort of a commonality in their home and that Chad was always the one that assigned people to be dark. And Chad had actually labeled some children at the Sunday school dark. And one of them, they said by name. Now, can you imagine hearing that? You know, you're watching YouTube and you hear your son's or daughter's name as being dark, labeled dark by Chad Daybell. And but then the on redirect, the prosecution was careful to say, you know, that child wasn't in the way of him being with Lori Daybell, was it? No. So that child's fine. <laughs> but uh, Tammy and knew that Chad was raiding people on this dark light and dark scale. Even his children knew that. I cannot wait to hear from his children. I really, really can't. So like I said before, I, I'm very concerned. Where is the evidence against Chad Daybell other than this influential cultish leader vibe that he had over these other people? Um, we got to hear more evidence. We got to hear more evidence. We really do. So that is where they left off for the day. This guy spent the, you know, six plus hours on the stand yesterday. And uh, it wasn't, like I said, not exactly riveting. <laughs> A lot of that was cross-examination. So uh, that's where we're going to leave off today. I will pick this up again on Monday, Tuesday. There's no court. There's something going on with uh, one of the court administration. Anyway, um, so I will pick this up on Monday. Sunday, I'm going to be live at 11 a.m. I'll show you all my crafts, what I've been doing, working on, and um, you can show me yours. Just post them in the Crafting Journey Facebook group. And if you're not a member, just answer a couple of questions. I'll let you in. And if you made it to the end of this video... Thank you for watching. I will see you Monday. Bye.